everybody. In this video, you will be learning about Q in C Sharp. The agenda of my video will be what is a Q, properties and methods we can use with the Q that are count, NQ, DQ, peak, contains, and clear. So let's get straight into it. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a console application in Visual Studio. Okay, over here I've created a console application in Visual Studio and I've called it Collections in C Sharp Demo. So first let's understand about what is a queue. Basically a queue is a collection that is that stores values in FIFO style and this is just opposite to a stack which I've talked about in my previous video. So let me give you give you a real time scenario to make you understand about what is FIFO style. So imagine a token system. The tokens can be like from 1 to 100 or something like that. And the first person will be served first, right? The last person does not get served first. So this is just opposite to a stack. And just like a stack, a queue also can have multiple null values and they can have duplicate values. Now let's take a look at the syntax and declaration of a queue. So to create a queue, you should say queue. That is from the system.collections namespace. This is a non-generic collection. So queue, my queue. My queue equals new q bracket semicolon and now let's add a value to this q by using the nq method so my q dot nq and over here you have to pass in the value that you want to add so let's add in like an integer first 10 okay okay this line and this time let's have a string like auctions. Duplicate that. Now we're gonna have um, a double. Pin point two five. Duplicate that. Now we'll have a boolean true or let's say something like false. Duplicate that. This time we'll have a null null value. So null just. And at the last, we'll have another value, a string value, say, end of Q. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can access all of the elements that are inside of our queue. So I'm going to say for each tab, our item inside of my queue. That is our queue's name. And remove the curly brackets. Console.writeLine. So I'm going to write onto the console, not a string, the value of item. Now let's go ahead and run the program. And this should um, return or print out all of the values that are inside of our queue. So 10. Just like that, actions, okay, 10.25, false, null, and end of queue. So, if you, um, if you recall from my previous video that while we, while we were using a stack, it was just printing it in the opposite way. So that's why I said that it stores values in a FIFO style. That is for queues, not for stacks. Don't be confused. Now let's talk about a property called comment. So now I'm going to demonstrate that to you. I'm going to comment out this for each loop. And I'm going to say my kill dot count. So the property. And actually we want to print this to the console. So console dot right line q dot count. Let's run the program. And this should return six. Which it does, that's because we have six elements inside of our queue. So, I just want to show you one more method 
that is dq. And this is equal to, we are using with stacks, this is equal to the uh, uh, pop method. So let me just show you how we can use it. And just like the pop method, it will take out the value, the first value, because this is in FIFO style, not in LIFO style, and print that onto the console. So let's say my Q.DQ on the program, and it prints out 10. That's because that's the first value that is over here. Now I'm going to close that. Now for demonstration, I'm going to duplicate this line two times and I'm just going to run the program. Um, right here, as you can see, it pops out the value 10 and prints it over here, takes that out and prints it over there. And then next comes option, so it takes that out, prints it over there. And again, after that comes um, 10.25, so take that out, print it onto the console. So that's what is happening over here. It's popping it and printing it. So I'm just going to close that. And let's talk about the peak method. So this is just equivalent to the peak method with a stack. But before doing that, let's talk more about the DQ method. So if I mouse over, I can see an exception, invalid operation exception. So that exception will be thrown if you're working with an empty queue. So it's always better to check the count of the queue before you DQ, before you call this DQ method. So again, let's talk about the peak method. So I'm just going to change that in every single place. Even this has that exception, invalid operation exception. Again, I recommend you to check the count before you use this method. So run the program. And as you can see, all of the times it prints out 10. So basically, like I said in my video about stack, it just retrieves the element. It does not take it out of the queue and print it onto the console. So it just retrieves. It just prints the value onto the console, so it'll always remain 10. Now let's talk about contains, contains method. So contains, and inside of here you have to pass in a value, but before that I'm just going to remove one. Remove one console that right line method. So right here I'm going to pass in false. That is inside of our queue and it's going to return true. It is going to return true because that value is present. And now I'm just going to give in a value that is not present, like 20, 20, 1. And first it should print out true, and then after that it should print out false. Oh, wait, we have peak over here. Sorry, we got an error. So we don't want peak, we need contains. And the error is gone on the program again. And we should again get true and then false. As you can see, first true. So we'll just move that again because false is inside of our queue and it returns false over here because 20 is not inside of our queue. So that's what it means. Now let me talk about another method that is clear. You'll already be familiar about that. So, it is used to clear a queue, just like for a stack. My queue dot clear. And then we'll print out the count of my queue. My queue dot count. Count. And let's run the program again. Control F5. Okay, and it prints out zero because we just cleared our queue over here. So it'll be left with no values. And now I hope you have understood about queues in C -Shirt. If you like the video, you like and share this video. Please subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching and goodbye till the next video.